Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for checking out The Secrets of Skateboarding. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about some secrets on how to get pop. So all, a lot of these episodes and a lot of the secrets I'm giving are mainly aimed to help beginners, but there are some hidden gems in here and secrets that can help even the most experienced skater. Some history on myself, if you don't know. My name is Nigel Alexander. I'm 35 years old. I've been skating for 21 years. I've been am for some companies. I've helped a lot of pros make it into the industry and have really amazing careers. And um, yeah, I've just always appreciated the progression of skateboarding and trying to get better at it. And I think I have some tips that could really help you guys. So, getting pop or ollieing higher is pretty controversial because I've heard people talk about it all the time. And a lot of people just say like, oh, that guy, he just has pop. He just has pop. That's why he can ollie high. That's why. And to me, that's, that's such like a, I don't know, it just seems like such a lazy excuse. I never really had pop back in the day, and over the years I figured out techniques and ways to help me learn how to ollie higher and have pop. And a lot of it isn't necessarily how high you can jump, but of course if you can jump high it's going to help, but it's mainly how fast you can pull your legs up. So if you can pull your legs up really fast both at the same time, which takes your entire body to do, it doesn't just take your legs, it takes your core, your hips, your knees, your ankles, everything. It's when you bend down, you jump, and you pull everything up as fast as you can. That's what pop really comes from. So I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how to have explosive pop. So the first tip I wanna show you guys, it's called wall sits. My good friend Aaron Babila taught me this because he hurt his knee really bad. And uh, when he started doing him, he started to realize like, hey dude, this like, this really helps with like getting pop. I think my friend Gary Greenlaw also helped with it. So shout out to you guys both. You guys helped me achieve a lot of my pop back in the day. But a wall sit is basically you just find any wall, bend your knees to a 90 degree angle and just sit against it. Do it for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and you'll start to feel the burn really fast. But what it does is it tightens up all the ligaments and joints in your knee and it makes them super strong, super poppy. It's a very, very easy exercise to do. You can do it anywhere and uh, it really does help a lot. I would suggest maybe doing a minute a night at first, but as you start to get better and better at it, you could do like two to five minutes a night, but it really helps keep your knees ultra, ultra tight. The next tip I got for you guys is to find like a set of stairs or like a curb. Depending on how much jumping you've actually done in your life, if you've played a lot of basketball, football, gymnastics, karate, or just generally like to run around and jump and play on things. Like I used to jump off my roof for fun. So this exercise wouldn't have really done much for me, but I know there are skateboarders who weren't athletes at all before. This will really help you a lot. You just find a curb or something kind of high, whatever you want to do it on, just jump up and down it a bunch of times. Do that as many times as you can. And well, I'm not gonna say that. Maybe do it like 20 to 50 times, depending on how tired your legs get. But if you're gonna do it on stairs, you can go up the stairs further and further. But just be careful, when you jump up, make sure you have your hands in front of you in case you slip. So I'm gonna go up to the third stair. But you wanna have your hands in front of you just in case, because if you jump, you slip, you fall, you wanna be able to break your fall. You don't wanna lose your teeth or end up with stitches from jumping up some stairs. Your mom will be really mad at me, so. Please keep your hands in front of you. If stairs doesn't do it for you, or you know, you're more experienced like me, you wanna find something a little bit higher. This is about a foot and a half, maybe two feet. And uh, you can see it by putting my board next to it. It's almost as tall as my board. This is really gonna be something, or this type of height, that's really gonna help you get your body in shape to, to like really have pop. So just doing five right there was really tough for me. And uh, that's pretty humbling. 
Because I used to be able to jump up on stuff really high. Like just jump right up it, like loading docks, all kinds of stuff. There ain't too many things around here that are that tall. So, I don't know, let's skate around. Maybe I can find something bigger. All right, so this is more something that could push my limits. This is quite a bit higher and I'm pretty sure I could do it, but there's a chance I might shin it. And when I say shin it, it's when you jump, you don't make it and your shins just scrape down the thing. So you really gotta be careful doing this because you can get seriously injured when you start jumping up really high stuff. So um, this is definitely for more experienced jumpers, but once you start jumping up stuff like this, this high all the time, your pop is gonna get so much higher, but you just have to practice it, exercise, and just really go for it, you know? good I didn't think I'd be able to do it but um definitely make sure you take time in between each jump make sure you're a good distance away or not too far not too close because if you can clip on the way up your toes can hit in it but uh, just be careful doing these but find something high like this is higher than my skateboard so that will help a lot that's more something that would benefit me and I'm really down to jump up something that high. So that's a good limit for me right now. So I need to find something this high around my house I can practice on, do like 30 a day and just watch my pop really go up. All right guys, so I wanna to talk to you guys about doing other types of exercises. Um, squats is a really good one and so is lunges, but you gotta be really careful with them if you don't do a squat right, and you don't do a, a lunge right, you can really hurt your knees. So a big rule of thumb is whenever you do any of them, make sure that your knee never goes past your toe. Because with skating, we already do that a lot anyway. The way you bend down, your knee almost always goes past your toe. So don't do that. So I'm gonna show a video of me, how I do my exercise at home. I use a a yoga ball behind my back to make sure when I do squats it never goes past my toe and it's the perfect way to do it shout out Richard Jefferson for showing me how to do this and uh, for lunges I just wouldn't do lunges I mean honestly unless you have like a personal trainer or someone right there with you to help you learn them it can really help you if you do them properly but for me I tried to do them one time and messed my knees up so bad I couldn't skate for a month. So be very careful with lunges. Another huge thing about having pop is to just always test your boundaries. Always try and 50 something higher. Always try and no side something higher. Always try and ollie up something higher. Always skate higher stuff. If you're always skating something high, it's just like the same with me jumping up that table. Your body's gonna get used to it. It's gonna know how to do it. It's just gonna figure it out. So if you're always jumping up something high or skating something high, your pop will just naturally become high. Another important thing too, is just when you're trying to do your flat ground tricks, you know, actually try to pop them. Don't just be content with just flopping your trick out. Like actually try to pop it, get it up there and just, you know, really do it. Instead of just, you know, being happy with a kickflip that rolls on the floor, I'm not gonna say any names, but there are some skaters out there who have no pop whatsoever. And their excuse is, oh, you just don't have pop. And it's like, no, you're, you, you're, you just haven't taught yourself how to have pop. It's, you can teach yourself, I'm sorry. It's not just like something you have or you don't. It's really easy. You just gotta have the willpower to do it. But um, that's a big thing is just actually trying to do it. You know, some people just, they just wanna throw in that excuse, I don't have pop. It, whenever someone tells me that, it's like, it's like the same when someone says like, oh, I'm just fat. It's like, no, you're not just fat. You just eat too much. And like when someone tells me that they don't have pop, it's like the same thing. It's like, no, you could have pop. You're just lazy. All right. Another thing about having pop that's very important is to keep your core very strong and tight. And basically, if you have a belly, popping's going to get a heck of a lot harder. I got a belly for a while. I'm actually battling like crazy to get my stomach back. And uh, you know, it just takes a lot of good eating, dieting, and um, 
also doing the right exercises. I do like 50 sit-ups a day, at least. And then I've been doing a lot of, uh, what's it called, um, planks. Planks help a lot. And just generally anything to help exercise my stomach. I want my stomach back. I've never had a six pack and I'm gonna get one, damn it. And it's gonna help a lot with my pop. I know it will. A more advanced exercise that I'm gonna start doing and I've messed around with it a little, but I didn't think my body was strong enough, but I think it's gonna be strong enough soon, is um, they have these weighted vests you can put on that you can pick how heavy they are and how much they weigh, but I'm actually gonna figure out about how much my skateboard weighs, and then I'm gonna make the vest weigh about as much. And I'm not gonna jump up on the highest stuff I can, but I will jump up on stuff like a foot or two, just to get that strength and just to get my body used to picking up this much weight because this is it's enough weight to really hold you down a little bit so i think that exercise is really going to be hugely beneficial and um, i'll let you guys know how how it's been affecting my skating with like an update video but uh i really think it's going to help a lot actually but with exercises like that you definitely got to make sure your body's ready for it so i'm pretty good at listening to my body and knowing when it's ready to try something new. All right, guys, well, that about does it for this episode. I hope that you're able to take some of these exercises and techniques that I've taught you to actually go out and learn to have some pop. It, it really is all just about forcing yourself to do it. And you know, when you're first learning it, if you don't have that much pop, it's not that much fun at all. But once you get it, having pop is like the best thing ever. Everything looks so much better. You can skate way more things. It's just way more fun, actually, because I've gone from having no pop to having a lot of pop. And it really is, it feels great just to be able to like blast your tricks like that. But um, thank you guys so much for checking out the episode. And uh, if you guys liked it, please subscribe to my channel, NK Vids, and Braille's channel, Braille Skateboarding. And uh, stay tuned, we're gonna have a ton of new content coming soon. And uh, please like, comment, favorite the video, share it, do whatever you can. It really does help us a lot. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for checking out this episode and stay tuned. Secrets of skateboarding.